Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another episode of our series Unveiling Human Treachery and Oppression from Ahlul Bayt al-Islam to today. In this discussion, we will be discussing the reactions to a couple of speeches I recently gave in public gatherings in the United States. These reactions are not just responses to my words, but they represent different perspectives and attitudes towards the issues we are discussing in this series. The first reaction came from an elderly man who during my speech asked me to make a dua for Pakistan. This man, despite his age and weakness, felt the pain of the situation. He may not have the physical or monetary strength to struggle, but he had the strength of dua. He has the strength of dua, and he is using his strength of dua. This is a form of jihad, as the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has said. The best of jihad is the word of truth in front of the oppressive ruler. Now, as part of this point, I do want to mention that any one of us has this power, even when we believe in a cause that we cannot accomplish ourselves. Let's say the freedom of Hijaz. Let's say the return of Baytullah to Ahl Bayt At least we can make a dua. We can make concentrated effort in every single thing that we do that we remind ourselves to make a dua for this cause. And that is a form of jihad. The second reaction was from a young man who said that he had never thought about the situation from this perspective. This reaction shows that as human beings, we cannot fully comprehend the situation until and unless we live through it. Sometimes we hear about the situation, but it is very difficult to understand what is actually happening. And that is why it is easy for Satan to create doubts and deviate us from the path of truth. It is crucial to highlight the reality to the youth as they have the power and time to make a difference. And as part of this, I would like to also add something that Dr. Hatim recently mentioned. There is this aspect of not recognizing the miracles as they're unfolding before our eyes. And we have seen it in the form of the rejection and demise of ISIS. We saw the miracle, but we are not, we lived the miracle, but we do not take it as a miracle. And that's why it's really important to think about these things from different perspectives so that we can take lesson and make an impact in our lives by impacting others through the lessons. Number three was the reaction from a middle-aged middle -aged person in his 50s, 60s with vested interest in the system. He messaged the administration to ask me not to speak on political issues. Even though my speech was not politically motivated, but an objective analysis of the situation, this reaction shows that those who have established themselves in the current system do not want to shake things up. They prefer to keep their religion separate from their worldly responsibilities and obligations. And that's why there is a constant struggle between the youth and those who are part of the establishment of the status quo. That's why all prominent worldly leaders always were supported by the youth and were not supported by the established status quo. Because they who are established, they've spent their life, they do not want to change what they have spent their lives building. Lastly, there is a group who listens and is a silent majority. They can be convinced but do not want to stand up for change until the silent majority is convinced that their support even minimal is needed to make a change things won't change and this conviction would come from the youth in conclusion it is our responsibility as mentioned in the quran to stand for truth and justice we should take lessons from the people who were addressing the people of the sabbath who were actually jews fishing on Saturday, and this group of people who were prohibiting the people who were actually fishing on Saturday were being asked by a third group, why are you asking the people to stop fishing on Saturday? They will not listen. Do you know what their answer was? Their answer was, we want to do our job so that on the day of judgment, we stand before Allah and say, we did our part. 
Therefore, my dear brothers, sisters, thank you for joining us in this episode of Unveiling Human Treachery and Oppression from Ahl Bayt al-Islam to today. We hope that this discussion has provided you with some food for thought and has encouraged you to delve deeper into the chronicles of our history. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.